The Halo franchise has been loved by many ever since its inception, but one thing that has always hurt me about it is the lack of a functioning multiplayer version on the PC. Well today I'm going to be revisiting and going even more in depth into Halo Online, codenamed El Dorito. Is this something that more people should jump into? Well, let's talk about that. Gamer Subs is a sugar-free, great-tasting energy formula for gamers and workaholics alike. We here at the Toasty Bros love the energy it provides while tasting great. Want to give it a shot? Get a free trial by using the link down below and use code Toasty Bros on your next full order for 10% off. So some key things to note here is that I have changed in regards to this game since my original video that I made years ago and here's the reasons why. For those who are totally in awe about the fact that there is a free to play Halo multiplayer on PC, let me explain real quick how this came to be. Microsoft launched a beta in Russia for a game called Halo Online, a free to play multiplayer based game on the Halo 3 engine. This was tested to see if there would be a possibility of having a Halo multiplayer on PC. At one point, some leaks of files from this beta were released, and since the beta was only region locked to Russia only, some devs in Halo Fanatics took it and ran with it and created the El Dorito mod. A funny name, but a creation that is nothing short of genius. As of late 2016, Microsoft officially announced that they have canceled the Halo Online project due to a lack of direction on where the game was going. With that gone, the El Dorito dev team had pretty much nothing holding them back and took off running with this one-of-a-kind PC Halo experience. The current version that I'm going to be playing in this video is 5.1.1, but there has been a ton of hype around the release of the .6 version where there are plans for full dedicated servers in multiple countries, which can only make this game reach new heights. I will be sure to revisit in another video the .6 version once it drops. But as far as the game goes in its current state, I want to be going over many important topics here, honestly resulting in one of the most in-depth reviews that I have done, so I highly recommend you go pick up a snack before diving any deeper. And if you want, I will leave a timestamp down below to skip to just the gameplay if that's all you're interested in. First, let's talk about the install. Getting the game is actually super simple. It's a very easy download with no real actual installer. You get access to a full directory in a zip file and all you have to do is extract it to a location of your choice. I prefer to extract it to my desktop, but really you can't go wrong with where you put it. The file is roughly 3.2 gigabytes at its current size, which is crazy efficient. But I also expected this since the game is running the Halo 3 engine, an Xbox 360 title. So now you launch the game by hitting the Dorito updater.exe file which is within the folder that you downloaded and you are good to go. There were some issues where I did display an error sometimes saying it couldn't find a certain file within the directory, but then all I did was re-download the game and the issue went away. But once you get it going, you'll have the option to either hit play or dive into some customization options that are provided. Within this menu, you can customize your character and change your name. Keep in mind, once you launch the game, this launcher that displays once you hit the updater.exe actually stays in the background so you can make changes on the fly without a restart. You also get access to basic FOV settings which goes all the way up to 160, which from my recent dev post will actually be limited to 120 in the future updates to eliminate some wall clipping with the weird FOV scaling. This game actually comes with full VoIP support as well and it's very well done. The games that I've been in where VoIP was being used, I've experienced no issues with. Very crystal clear audio that really doesn't skip a beat. Lastly, with the launcher, you get some auto-execute functionality, being able to bind some built-in functions for debugging purposes or moderating if you're hosting a server. There's also a very extensive list that'll be too long for me to go over with commands and keybinds, so feel free to browse them yourself, but all in all, a very well put together launcher. Now launch into the game and you are greeted with a very interesting menu that has the Halo 3 vibes all over it with the same style of menu and even a settings button that suggests that you hit a start button on the controller. Now let's dive into the settings within the game itself. There are four categories in the settings that you can choose from. Gameplay, controls, video, and audio. 
The gameplay tab brings up options for HUD shake, player marker colors, and even camera FOV. But I believe the FOV within the launcher that I mentioned before supersedes this if over 90. The controls tab gives you options to configure for a keyboard or gamepad if you do choose so. I will get more into a feel of playing Halo on a keyboard in the gameplay section of this review. You can change the on foot sensitivity and vehicle sensitivity along with a mouse acceleration option. Video settings are pretty straightforward. You get to choose the screen resolution, which in this version of the game, they actually have full support for 4K and ultra wide resolution solutions, a huge plus for taking this game serious by PC enthusiasts. There is also a built-in anti-aliasing option that's only a checkbox, but does a pretty good job smoothing out some of the Halo 3 jaggeds in the old engine that was originally for an Xbox 360. Auto settings as well are pretty straightforward, no noticeable flaws from what I can see in the settings. In this video, I'm actually going to mainly focus on playing on servers and leave out the Forge mode for the .6 update because they're going to be doing a massive list of features to add to it. So stay tuned for that if you're interested. So as I mentioned before, as of right now on this version, there are no dedicated server support. The community is very small, hence this issue. But as I mentioned, they already have plans for a worldwide dedicated server update, a massive step forward for improving performance while being able to play this game. From my experience hopping onto this game, there were only a couple servers with a decent population. Again, it is very important to note here that this is a very niche audience and they are really targeting just these people. However, I still think a lot of people don't even know this exists and they do fit the fold of being Halo enthusiasts and they're kind of just being left out by not even knowing what's going on. Most of the game modes are your standard Halo game modes. However, you can host your own server and also make custom ones to fit the gameplay that you're looking for. My personal favorite from the console version that made its way over is SWAT, where headshot damage is the name of the game. Alright, so once you're in the game, you're going to experience something that is truly amazing. This community, while small, is a great experience to play with. Compared to other massive shooters on Steam or other platforms where the toxicity level is so easily noticeable, you have something a lot more mellow here, and that's probably to do with the small venture size of the community. But enough about all these details and settings, I know what you all are here for, and that's gameplay. So how does it play? Is it like Halo should be on the PC? Well if it isn't, it really is as close as it's gonna get. The gun mechanics are Halo 3, the movement is Halo 3, everything about this game just works for Halo on the PC. But don't take my word for it, here is some extended gameplay for you to enjoy. Ball taken. Now is it perfect? No. There are some bugs still with gun audio having desync when used in rapid succession, but other than that, I feel it is a very fluable and enjoyable Halo experience. 
servers are solid, and with Microsoft canceling the project altogether, the El Dorito team has no more worries to deal with when it comes from hiding from Microsoft. They've tried and failed many times, and they can make this experience so good and make it something that Microsoft refused to bring to the PC. I guess it's their loss, and I have a lot of faith in this community actually blowing up, and I created this video in a way to try to inform you all out there of its existence and try to give it a shot. Playing keyboard and mouse Halo is a great experience, and it will allow you to get away from the PUBG and CSGO toxicity that is probably wasting your brain matter away. So if you are a big Halo fan and you want to give this game a shot, there will be a link in the description down below where you can check it out. Again, I am just a massive Halo fan and wanted to create this video for you all to go check out and play with us. And we definitely want to make more content around this game because I am really impressed with what this team is doing over there and creating something that brings back a lot of memories from me playing the Halo genre on the Xbox and the Xbox 360 back in the day. And I really would love to see this community flourish and grow, especially with this point six update. And that about wraps things up here, guys. If you like this video, leave a like down below and comment what you think. If you haven't already, follow us on Twitter, join our Discord community, and subscribe for more content from the Toasty Bros. If you made it all the way to the end of this video, be sure to comment Spartan down below in the comment section and let me know if you're interested in downloading this game. And if you have any suggestions for future videos, feel free to leave them in the comment section down below. Hope to see you all in the next one, guys. Peace out.